Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be making some alternatives for the July 2021 sheet load of cards using goodies from the latest Not Too Shabby Box of the Month. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. I did mention it last month to give you a heads up to go ahead and get subscribed to the Not Too Shabby Box of the Month kit, but this month is so adorable and I'm glad that I'm here today to share some cards with you using pieces from the kit. Now I will show you closers up of the items I'm going to be using today, but if you would like to see the whole kit, I will link the release hop hashtag in the description box below and you can check out all of those wonderful designers creations as well as they show you a closer look at the pieces. Quickly though, in this month's kit, you get three paper pads. You get this faux embossed watercolor slimline pad and let me show you one of these up close. So that looks embossed, doesn't it? But it's not, it's flat. So you can get that gorgeous look, but then you won't have the added dimension if you're going to mail these. And there are lots of pretty colors and they just kind of an ombre watercolor look and then those great textures. The other two paper pads are six by six. There's the summer flowers with lots of great florals and some pastel patterns, including some ombres. I think some of these would make great like backgrounds, like almost like wallpaper if you were doing a scene. And the paper pad I'll be using today is Busy Bees, and it is full of honeycomb and honey and bee related papers, as well as a few coordinating patterns. There are two stamp sets in this month's kit, and because my card is bee related, I will be using the Buzzy Bees set. It has all kinds of adorable little bees here, as well as some coordinating sentiments that I just think are so fun. The other set is also kind of insect related, but you have a variety, a ladybug, another adorable little bee, a butterfly, and some snails, as well as again, coordinating sentiments for those. And then this month's ephemera set is just as cute. It is full of adorable bees, you have cute ladybugs, and there's some snails in here, butterflies. So I'm going to be using the bee themed ephemera, some pieces from that. And then for embellishments this month, you get a rainbow of Gina Marie Designs gems and a little packet of shaker mix that has some, I think they're polymer clay flowers, some sequins, great for the bee and the pollinator theme of this month. If you're interested in this kit, I do suggest heading on over to the Not Too Shabby shop now. You can buy the paper separately, but if you want the stamps or the ephemera, you do need to get the kit and there were just a handful left when I checked as of recording this video. I do have a link in the description box below and I do have a discount code down there. You can't use it on the kit, but Not Too Shabby has other products of their own, as well as many products from other stamp companies. So I hope you'll stop by there, pick up this adorable kit, maybe throw some other things in there and save money on that. In front of me are the supplies that I'll be using for today's cards. I did pre-select two pattern papers from the pad. I have kind of this honeycomb background and then this honey pot with, I don't know if that's a honey stirrer, and then some little bees for the other one. From the ephemera, I got out all of the ones that were honey or bee related. I don't know yet which ones will make it on the final cards, but I did just go ahead and separate those from the rest. And then of course, I will be using some sentiments from that Buzzy Bees stamp set. 
Like I mentioned in the intro, the layout I'm going to use is the July 2021 Sheet Load of Cards edition. But instead of using the cutting guides that come with the printable, I am going to use the dimensions for single cards and just cut what I can out of 6x6 papers. As I start the process, I will bring in more products and tools, and I'll be sure to let you know those in the voiceover. But as always, if I leave you with any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! Like most of my projects, I got started by doing the cutting. Now you will want to make sure that before you make the first cut, that if your pattern paper has an orientation, you keep that in mind when doing so. Now I won't be going over a lot of the dimensions here, but you can get an idea of how I cut the paper. To get those dimensions and the specifics, you can go to the video linked in the description box below. It's called the July 2021 Sheet Load Debut, and you can find out how to download the printable for free. For my card base and folded card today, I'm going to be using Craft Cardstock from Gina K Designs. The first pieces I cut are for the backer, and I got out four pieces of cardstock and cut them each to six and a quarter inches wide. It was shortly after I cut these down that I realized I cut way too many pieces because I only need to yield four cards. So what I ended up doing is cutting down those backers to six and a quarter by three and a quarter. And then I used the strips that I had already cut. And instead of making that book bind fold card, I decided that I would make a little card to go on the front that opened from bottom to top. So you have a little bit more room to write in and this is just an alternative way that you can use the sheet load. I ended up cutting these strips to five and a half inches wide by five inches tall. Normally with just half folds, I would just fold these by hand, but this card is a little bit thicker. So I did bring in my score at board and I just scored a line down the center so that those would fold nicely without any cracking on that fold line. Off camera, I used some scraps from cutting down my card bases and the free printable that I gave to channel members to cut the pieces for my sentiments. If you would like access to this free cut file as well as other perks of channel membership, I have a link in the description box below with more details. Since this card is on the smaller side, I chose the four littlest bees from the ephemera pack. And because it is such a small piece of pattern paper, I cut off some of the white border around each of the ephemera pieces. I did do most of the cutting off camera, but here's a look at each piece after it was trimmed down. Just like with my last set of July cards where I doubled it, I am going to be embossing that backer card so there's a little bit of difference between the folded card and the base. For today's cards, I chose this honeycomb embossing folder from Tailored Expressions. This is new to me. I got it in a grab bag and I have honeycomb embossing folders, but I just like the small size of this one. Speaking of small size, even though this would emboss a card front, it is not going to emboss the entire strip from left to right. So let me show you a little trick with any embossing folders that have a background that repeats. What you'll want to do is put one end of your cardstock piece into the embossing folder and then take some time to line it up well. Now this particular folder has lots of straight lines so that did help. Once you have it where you want it in the folder, you're going to go ahead and run that through your die cut it machine. Make sure to keep a nice tight hold on that embossing folder when your cardstock is in there. Now you will not want to roll it all the way through so that you do not get a line where the embossing folder edge is. 
Now you're going to open your embossing folder back up, but this time you want to make sure you know where the debossed part of your folder is, and that's where it's etched down into there. Then you're gonna take your piece that you just ran through, your die cutter, and you want to line up the pattern on that with the pattern on the rest of the folder. You just kind of want to eyeball it at first to see where the patterns match and then I usually rub gently on mine until it no longer moves and I know it has fallen into those grooves. Then it's just a matter of sending it back through your die cutter. Once again, don't go all the way in, but do roll it in far enough that you'll emboss that second half. I continued with the same process until all four pieces were embossed. I did start putting my piece of cardstock a little further into the embossing folder for the remaining three. Now that all of the pieces are ready, we can start getting these cards put together. The first thing I'm going to do is put my pattern paper onto my card base, and this will look similar to the original process, but you will want to keep in mind once your adhesive is on the back of piece A, you're going to want to make sure you put it to the right side of that fold card, and you want to get about an eighth of an inch border on the three outer edges. Then you're going to put your adhesive on the back of piece B and when you go to put this on the card you want to make sure that you don't do the eighth of an inch between the two pieces. You want the eighth of an inch to be around the outside edges as well. On the original sketch there would have been a score line there and possibly some twine that would separate those two pieces evenly. But the way I'm doing the card today, I will cover that up in a different way in just a little bit. To add a little sparkle to the card and to once again kind of fill in some of that white space between the two pattern paper pieces, I brought in some embellishments that are new to me, but they may look slightly familiar. You already know that one of my favorite embellishments to use that is flat that adds sparkle are the Elizabeth Craft Designs glitter dots. Well, these are like glitter dots, but they're in strips. For these cards, I'm actually going to use something that maybe was like the throwaway part of it. It is a little strip in between the fancy patterned ones, but it still has that clear glittery center and some gold on the outside. I place a little strip between the two pattern papers and then I leave about a half of an inch on the top when I trim it off. This way I can wrap that around the back and later it will be secured with some adhesive. I continue to do this for all the rest of the cards until they each had a little sparkle. Now, while I continue to do that, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or the question of the video. Today's question once again comes from channel member Karen C and I did switch it up a little bit, but she would like to know, besides sheet load templates, do you use other sketches? Now I'm interested to know, if so, what are some of your favorite sites to get sketches from? Make sure if you're going to answer today's QOTV that you leave your answer in that comment section below and don't forget to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV. Next up, I stamp my sentiment onto each of my four little sentiment pieces. I use the Be Wonderful sentiment with some Gina K charcoal brown ink. Now I did switch these up a little bit. On the first one, I inked the stamp up once and stamped it. And on the second one, I inked it up twice. I wasn't sure if I wanted the more faint brown or a little bit darker. And I actually ended up liking each one. So I did two in each of those ways. Once those were all stamped, I placed these onto my card fronts and just like the sketch shows after the adhesive is on the back, it gets aligned with the bottom left of pattern paper piece A. Then I brought in those embossed card bases and because I couldn't decide which side I wanted facing up, I did two with the embossed up and two with the debossed up.
Now the first card I'm going to put together is where the embossing is up and because it doesn't have as much surface area to adhere to, when I place my adhesive on the back, I did end up doing a couple strips through the center just so that there was some more sticky on that so this card would stay together. I finished putting the cards together like this and then it was time to get my little bees put onto the card fronts. Since the card was pretty flat so far, I brought in some mini dimensionals to pop my bees up off the card. I also went ahead and distributed a bee for each card base. I wanted to make sure that the bees with the honey pots did not go on top of the honey pot pattern paper, so that worked out well that I had two with honey pots and two without. I added some of those little dimensionals to the back and then I popped that on the card. Now I did end up using some of the outside of the dimensional piece, you know, what was left over, because I only had a few of those little ones left. But that is a great way to make the most of what you have, because even after those dots are gone, you can still use that foam. It is sticky. Here's a look at the finished set of four cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together today's cards. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Don't forget to visit the Not Too Shabby shop. I have all of their links in that description box below. And until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.